So uh, in watching over everybody's sh shoulder as you guys are starting this, this uh, first assignment, I noticed a couple of mistakes that were happening. Um, and I wanted to, to just kind of go over a couple things really quickly. And one major thing in particular that I didn't go over in the first demo that I, I kind of forgot about because I just do it automatically and didn't think about how it would affect you guys. One of the things that I've noticed that people have been doing <clears throat> is as you drag a clip down to the timeline, you'll notice, let me just zoom in here on it, okay, that you can get two types of arrows, an over arrow or a down arrow. In this case, we want the down arrow because if you let go of the mouse with the over arrow like that, it does that. It splits your audio, pushes everything over to the right. Now this is really bad. Okay, this is really bad for two reasons. Number one, because most people will correct it by doing this. Click and just drag it back, okay? Now that works, but guess what? Now any clips that were after that are now out of place. And you have to go back in and you have to retime everything. It, it, it's, it becomes a big mess. When you drag a clip down into the timeline, in this case, you want to make sure that the arrow is pointing down. Now it will drop that into the timeline and it doesn't push everything over to the right. Later on, when you get into a more uh, complex movie, that can become very handy because you can do a whole series of edits and then realize you want a clip in the middle of them. And instead of having to move them all first, then drop it down, then move them all back or whatever, you just bring it down so the right arrow is facing over and then it will push everything off to the right. So it can be a very handy thing. In this case, not so much. The other thing that I think that you should do is if you go over here down into the timeline, you'll notice that your audio has these two padlock symbols on it, these tracks. If you click those, you'll see your audio now has these diagonal lines through it. What this means is now it's locked. You can't change the audio. And in this case, that's good. Now sometimes it would be bad, but here it's good. So if I drag this down and I have the right arrow over, it still messes up this clip. This clip still bunched over to the right. But we notice our audio is intact. And that's really cool. So some of you might be at saying, well, okay, Mr. Westford, that's great. I've been dragging clips down now for a day and I've got like eight different cuts in my audio. What do I do? Well, the answer is your audio is probably okay. Because if you just move it right back, it'll pick up where it left off and you won't even hear it. But what I recommend you do is delete all the pieces of audio that you've got, go back to your original and just drag it down. Theoretically, your clip should all be still timed perfectly if you do that. Okay, theoretically. You should be able to just drag the audio back down again, now lock it, and everything should be okay. Does that make sense? The other thing that I'm seeing is a lot of you guys have not made sure that your canvas is set to widescreen. Okay, some of you still have black bars on the top and the bottom of your clips. Make sure that you right click on the sequence, go to settings, and make sure that you have anamorphic checked so that you have a widescreen video in, the, in this case. 99.9% .9 of the time with all the the cameras that we're using, you will want a widescreen video. And this is with standard definition. If we're shooting with high definition, it actually gets even more complicated. We'll talk about the technical reasons for that later, but just make sure with these clips, these are standard definition clips, that you are editing with anamorphic 16 by 9 checked on, and then if you already have clips that are on the timeline, they're going to be squished. So what you need to do is double click, get the clip up here in the browser or the viewer, click on the, uh, the motion button, there's the distort, and right here it'll say negative 33.33. Change that to zero, 
and you'll be able to see your clips will we'll go back to normal over here in the canvas. Okay, so those are two big things that I feel like you really need to know. Lastly, I'm just going to say a, a little bit of warning here, and that is some people have started to do transitions where they're putting dissolves and fades on their clips. Don't do that yet. Get everything down in the timeline first. And the reason for this is because some of them won't happen. You won't be able to do transitions on some of your clips. The reason for that is basically another demo that I will do later. Okay, so just realize now that don't do transitions. We'll handle that later. Okay, any questions? That's it.